And welcome to another episode of Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I'm James McCormick, and to my left over here, we have Corbett Perkins over here. He is back in the saddle again. So, Corbett, what's going on, man? Not a whole lot. How's life been treating you? Uh, pretty good. We're got some things in the works. So, yeah? Yeah. So, as far as digging history goes, we want to talk a little bit about the importance of not just the metal detecting, but getting out and doing things and not, you know, being shut in. You know, we went through this whole COVID episode and a lot of people were locked in and shut in. As you know, uh, I've done a lot of digging with, uh, with my dog, Bravo. And, uh, and obviously, I have missed uh, having a, some really good interaction here with, uh, with Corbett. But Corbett is coming back out and has actually, uh, uh, you know, been working on some things. But I just would like to hear from your own words, Corbett, about why you like getting out and doing things. And, and basically, what would you tell somebody that's struggling right now that's been in your shoes or in your shoes now? Well... You got your own demons that you got to fight. I understand that. I fight my own every day. I'm fighting them now. But um, you just got to try to motivate yourself and get off the couch. I'm not one to preach, but I haven't been the best at getting up off the couch, which is my fault, and I realize that. But we're going to make a change, and we're going to put them demons back in their box and go on about my business and do me and not worry about everything else. So... That's the best thing. I, that's the only thing I can tell you. And talk to somebody if you need to. Um, maybe they can motiv find your motivation, help you find it, and get you up off the couch and get you out your dark spot. I don't know. Uh, I'm available. Call me. Um, like I said, I'm not the best, but I can help you out. Maybe help you get off your couch. and mm -hmm. Maybe I can come to your house and drag you off your couch and take <laughs> you with me. You come with me, and I'll go with you, and then we'll both be happy. Yeah. Now, now to, to put this in perspective, when you talk about getting somebody off the couch, explain to people how big you are. <laughs> Six foot four, about 250, 260 pounds. <laughs> so, so if you want to drag me off the couch, then more power to you. <laughs> well, you know, what? now let's talk a little bit about the digging part, part of this. When was the last time that, uh, that you actually went digging? Oh, God. Um... It's been a long time ago. Long time before, ago. A little bit before COVID happened. Uh, and then COVID happened, and I didn't want to get around anybody because I didn't want that stuff, and I didn't want to give it to anybody else. So, yeah, it's been a... It's been over a year. I think the last time was up at Byron's. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Byron Tucker, uh, who's been on the show a few times as well, uh, Byron, uh, you know, is now in Florida. And uh, Byron's a lot of fun to be around, and we, we miss yeah. him. He is a snowbird, but he's becoming more of a Floridian than a snowbird. So I'm hoping that he's listening <laughs> to this right now because we got to get back together with our buddy because yeah. there's so many artifacts to find that are still in the ground. Yep. How many more James shells do you think's up there? Oh, God, at least with the research I did, it, there's at least 70 more. Because I think there was 72 fired, 79 fired, mm -hmm. somewhere around in there. And we found two. So if there's 72, we, there's 70 more up there just waiting. Just in the ground. Just, just waiting. Just waiting for somebody Teasing to come us. up there. Come and get us. Come On and get private us. property, too. On private property. That we got access to. So anyways, so we're going to get up there and we're going to, uh, to work that again. Of course, the heat's had a little bit of an effect. Yeah. Too. Last summer was wasn't no joke. Yeah. There's also a grape shot up there we're missing. Yeah, I know. Big, I got a big, big old chunk shot. of it. I got a couple got, of big chunks of it. I got about three of them, so there's bound to be a whole lot more. So I got the one James shell that I'm telling you, you lay that grape shot in that dent. You think it hit there. that? I think it got hit by grape shot, man. I'm just that's a lucky you. shot if that's, a, if that's what happened. It, you know, if that's the case, <laughs> you think about it, Corbett. You think about it. That shell was flying through the air going just... Breaking the speed of sound, mile an hour. you know what I mean, and gets hit by a piece of grape shot in the middle of this bombardment, and it knocks it into the ground. Because whenever I found it, it was facing back towards the Union lines. Yeah, and you know now the ground could have shifted. Somebody could have moved yeah. the dirt around. It, it may have been done that way, but I don't think so. 
I think that that was hit. Now, I wasn't with that's you when you found the second one. Yeah. The first one, I was there. Now, the second one was laid Which right. The first one you found, I was right there in that <laughs> area, right there, and I just decided to swing to the left, and you went to the right. I was like, ah, if I would have just went to the right, uh, but I would have found it. So that's another thing, tell, too, <laughs> to tell people about. Look, it's a, a James shell's big, so it's this big around, about that, you know, tall. about that tall. And literally, we were right next to each other digging. My machine went that way, his machine went that way. I ended up getting the signal. And so this is another this is the reason why I tell people this. Don't stop going to a place and think, well, I've dug everything up. Oh, this place has done been it. hit hard. There there can't be anything left here. No, that's not true because the ground always pushes something else. If it's further down, years go by, all the water and the sediment just rise it rises up. So there's bound to be countless other artifacts. So for us, we like the deep freeze winters because that increases that ground hooving, you know, when it freezes up and it goes mm -hmm. down. If, if the ground would be able to freeze below that frost line, then it would push even more stuff up. Uh, but that's what they call that, a ground hooving or heaving. I've heard it called both. So, you know, one time I heard somebody call a, uh, a walking liberty and a standing liberty coin. I've heard it called both. And then, you know, you'll, you'll hear people say, well, it's not a standing, it's a walking. And then you'll hear people say, no, it's a standing liberty, not a walking. I just, just call it a liberty. <laughs> we'll cut I, the walking part. <laughs> I, I just call it a jackpot, man. I mean, we, got, we got boxes of them, man. So, I mean, it's like, you know, here's the thing. We find coins, we find stuff like that all the time. But like The best said, coin I found was that 1853 seated liberty uh, Quarter. quarter yeah you know that had to have been on a battlefield dropped. that had to have been dropped by one of those soldiers on a battlefield in well a retreat. what was weird is right next to it too i got another signal and come and find out it's a uh, um one of the virginia state buttons that's right yeah so you know uh if you find a Virginia State button or something like that, a Civil War button, see, that's a lot of people say, well, what's the value of that? Well, the value is maybe 35, maybe 50, but maybe 100 bucks. I looked at the coin, it was $35, I think, and, mm -hmm. but it's got more historical significance to that. Because just think about the poor dude who had that. That, that could have been his whole paycheck, and he mm -hmm. lost it that day. Yeah, it may have lost his life. Maybe. I don't may know. He lost his life. I always find, and you found, you know, I have found some wedding bands out in these I places. found one wedding band. One wedding band. And maybe those that's are why we, sad. Maybe that's why them ghosts keep bothering us. Could be. Maybe that's why we see, we get to go out and film them when we're out. <laughs> and, you know, we've seen some weird things. And we uh, put it up on this show before. Yeah. We were at visiting a battlefield one time. We weren't metal detecting there. We were just visiting. Uh, and just kind of sitting around, and it started to get night, and... There was and, a light in the yes. woods where there wasn't supposed to be a light in the woods. So... And what a bunch color of, was that light? It was like a bluish-white color. It was... I don't know how to explain it. It was just weird. And, and, and when was the last time you and I talked about this? Probably that night, right? Yeah. I was just telling somebody about that daggone story. What about the keys that you found that one time? Uh... No, that is that. spooky. <laughs> that is real spooky. Yeah. So there was a suicide that occurred, you know, and I, you know, and it just, and we found, I found a set of keys. And, uh, you know, just so happened that. Well, know, I found that pocket change too that was right by there where you found the keys. So that, that was probably that guy's pocket change. Set up there. Which and, is right beside a Civil War cannon. And uh, I let his demons get a little bit too out of hand. And didn't put them back in the box and couldn't deal with them no more so I guess he decided to take matters in his own hands which wasn't a good idea but so now he's probably haunting us well you know what though <laughs> I think that's a good segue into why it's important that we're here and why that all of you that are out there and you're watching this show right now if you feel like you're on your last you don't have anything left telling you there's hope don't give up don't ever give up if there's one message that I think that I'd like for us to deliver when we created this show it was all about digging history having fun with metal detecting 
but it's also about honoring the sacrifice and helping our brothers and sisters that are veterans or Gold Star families, or maybe you're the kid of somebody that uh, passed away. You know, we get a lot of messages, and here recently, I've got a lot of messages, emails from people wanting to know what kind of metal detector, will yeah. you show me how to do this, or show me how to do that? And it's like, that really warms my heart. That well, I did that. Do that. I did that. The last time I went out metal detecting was with that uh, newspaper reporter. That That's was right. the last time. Yeah. And that was, that was around Charleston, right? Yeah, that was, yeah, we went to Magic Island, I think, and <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah. But I tried to teach the guy what he needed to know and how to use the machine, but it was just horrible down there, so he took it home and did his yard, too, so. Uh, Hopefully he found something. Well, he did. He did a big article, uh, a big news article in the paper about it, but I don't, I never seen it, so I don't know. Hmm. I haven't seen it either, but you know, I mean, I'm sure somebody else out there had seen it, and we get those kind of stories. And uh, but, but again, the mental health aspect of this, let's not, let's not de let's just not, let's just call it what it is. Okay, there's somebody. Everybody deals with some kind of trauma, tragedy, some kind of nonsense in your life that puts you in this bad way. It puts you in a funk. You know what I mean? That's Down in a hole, say, in a rut. You got a rut and you got a hole. <laughs> Just depends on whether you let let your demons take you out of that rut and put you in the hole. But you you can climb out of it. You trust me. I've done it. I do it every day. Like I said, if you got problems and you need to talk, and you don't want to call that suicide hotline or whatever. Call me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll put my phone number out there if you need it. Yeah. You know, I'm here, especially if you're a vet. You don't have to be a vet. You don't even have to be a veteran. If you if you're down down that bad, and you need to talk to somebody, <clears throat> by all means, call me. You know, I'll try to help you out. You know, it's really heartbreaking is when you hear about these young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I had a friend who his you know 17 year old son took his life, and it was mm. just it was the most heartbreaking thing. And and when you see that. It's devastating. I have another friend. She had a 13-year-old son, mm. you know. And, um, you know, it's hard for me to even talk about it. But if we don't talk about it, then we don't address yeah. that big elephant in the room. And, and part of the reason why we're here, folks, is that, you know, we're here to try to make a difference and stop some of that. You know what I mean? Yep. How do we stop it? By using what we love to do, which is metal detecting, and to give you hope. Now, if you're a kid... You know, one time I came in here and I wore glasses in here because I knew there was a kid that we had that got glasses and was worried about kids making fun of him wearing his glasses. Well, you know, we were sending a message out to show that young man that we're supporting you, both of us. Him and yeah. I both will wear glasses from yeah. time to time. And it's like, we got to wear our glasses to see. If somebody's making fun of you because you want to see, you know what I mean? Well, you don't need them people in your life, number one. Anybody, right. who's, anybody who's causing drama and feeds your demons is nothing but a cancerous anchor. Cut that anchor and swim back up to the shore and live your life, do you. And I try to tell my kids, all four of them, if you need to talk, talk to me. I'm not unapproachable, talk to me. More than likely I've been there and done that and got the t-shirt. I'm not free of sin. There's been several, several circumstances that I've tried to do stuff. Mm. So, I've got that t-shirt. Just get off the couch, come with us, and let's get this back rolling. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get it back, well, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it rolling. I know Bravo and I have been out there running all over the place doing our thing, but we run into people that are, that are battling these things. And, and parents, you have your kids and you're having a hard time talking to them. Sometimes your kids will open up to somebody like us, mm -hmm. you know, um, because we're teaching them about a hobby that they like to do. And we can show them something that's not just about playing video games. I don't have anything against kids playing video games. Well, not only games. that, but they trust us and, yeah, you know, we're more approachable than, say, you go to your parents and talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that, which by all means, I'm here. I'm a dad, too. I know how to, I can try to steer you down the right path. That's the only thing I can do is try to help you out. Yeah, and it's important. I can't stop you, but I can try. Yeah, well, you know what, though? I think that the key to this 
And again, I know we're going to have a little bit of footage uh, from the field, folks, but, uh, but, but this is very important. This is why Corbett and I are here. We're here because, not just because we're trying to talk about the history of West Virginia, America, and trying to give you a, an unadulterated view of it, but we're also here because we want to give somebody a tool to put in your toolbox so that you can use it for your own physical and mental health to make your life a better and more enjoyable uh, uh, existence. And, and coming up on, you know, the holiday seasons and stuff, people, you know, have a tendency to, mm -hmm. demonstrate, you know, to be depressed. Well, it's this weather, too. You get up when it's dark, you go to bed when it's dark. I get that. But you can't let, you can't let that get you down. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you're learning history from us and trying to help you cope with your demons. Yeah, Everybody. We had, we had a great, uh, we had a great show on here one time when you went over them flags. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And, and it was an educational thing. It wasn't about, you know, we were showing you the difference between the different Confederate flags out there, okay? And it was all about education. I got a lot of comments, positive comments on that. I was like, thank you. Most Maybe people don't know. know. So, know. I mean, that's why we're here is to try to get you the note, let, give you some knowledge. I mean, I'm not, the, I'm not the God of all knowledge, but I can't, I know the difference between the Confederate flags, and I'll try to school you on that so you know. You're not ignorant to, to what is what and thinking that one battle flag is it, which it ain't. Sometimes we find things out in the field, and I'll hold it up and I'll say, I really don't know what this is, but if somebody knows what it is, I don't want to be ignorant. You know, I don't want to be ignorant either. So <laughs> if you see something, it's like I'm not going to say, well, this is, uh, if I know it, if it's a three-ring bullet, I can tell you it's a 58 caliber, 0 .55, 0 .577, or 69 caliber. Or it's, uh, you know, one of the multiple calibers that was yeah. out there. Uh, we can tell you that. But there are some things that we can't tell you about. I found the thing out at Scary Creek. Still don't know to this day what it is. We need to get that out here. We need to have part of our show where we have, these are the things we have yet to identify. I have yet to, but it looks like it's a, um, a little makeup, like a sterling silver makeup thing. Because it's got little... I don't know, I'd have to bring it and let everybody see it because I, I put it on Facebook and nobody knows what it is. Some people say it's an ashtray or a prophylactic cover, but it's not. Mm. I, know, I, know that's, I know the difference and it's not, it's not an ashtray or it's not, it's not a three. It's not a condom. Yeah, 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 no, it's not a condom mm. container, so I don't know what it is. I think it has to do with women's makeup. Yeah. There's several things I got at home that I still, to this day, don't don't even know what they are. So they're just in the miscellaneous bin. Like, okay, well, I'll figure it out one day. So Corbett, now that you're back doing this thing here, um, what kind of machine are you gonna be using out there? Uh, you got several, don't you? That's a tough one. I'm probably gonna have to stick with my Garrett. Uh, I have to stick with, I'm, to be honest with you, I mean, I got that Vanquish, or not the Vanquish, um, did you the get the no Legend? No Noke to Micro no Legend Kito, Simplex? No yeah, that yeah, one. That's a Simplex good one. Simplex Plus or something that's like that. It's a great machine. It's kind of like a spin off of the Mind Lab. It's a great machine, though. No, it's a great but machine. <laughs> I don't, I've not played with it too much, so I don't really know how it, how it reacts to stuff. So it's a I'll great probably machine. stick with what I know and stay with my Garrett. So, in the interim, though, folks, enjoy this uh, short segment of some of our uh, activities in the field, and we'll be right back for our closing. All right, folks, I'm going to let y'all dig this one with me. It's coming in with a real good. How it was. That's like a 52. Barber Dime, folks. Wow. 
with that 121 years old. Pretty cool. So what I do with these is I collect these old medicine bottles and I put them in this medicine bottle. Y'all can watch Bravo while he chews. See that? First dime of the day. I hope it's not the last. So, and we've hit this area a lot. I'm telling you, it's just all about the time of the year. It's colder now, and there's not as much uh, growth on the ground. Uh, on the ground. Ah, there goes Bravo. Okay, folks, I got a theory. So, I found my dime straight down there where that tree is right there okay just on the other side now i searched didn't find anything else over there so i have shot an azimuth that goes straight up over the hill over on the other side near the riverside because i want to see if this is a a route that somebody was was traveling uh, and possibly dropped some coinage or something going up and down the hill. Don't know if that's gonna work, but you know, hey, I'm searching where everybody else has not searched and it's rough, you know, cause most people don't go into the roughness. Most people will stick with the, uh, you know, the wide open trails and stuff and that's fine for them. But for me, I've got a, I mean, I'm really looking at this thing and trying to put up a pattern here. So anyways, keep watching folks. Okay. A little bit of a signal here. And Bravo wants to play with that stick. Let go. Here it is, right here. Okay, you can tell I'm bundled up today. Well, there's a reason for that. Because it's really cold outside. Ow. Okay, take two. here okay let's see what we got here uh it could be a shotgun shell I finally get into it sorry about the lead that's your buddy bravo again and of course the wind there it is. It's a piece of a pocket knife. There we go. Look at it. Just look at him. The clown. He's the clown. Okay, well, let's see what we found here. All right, Bravo, knock it off, stop. The people wanna see what we dig up, man. They don't wanna... Okay, let's see what we got. Ah. 
around when you're not. Shotgun shit. All this is robbing. He's still over there digging in the wrong spot. Oh, man. Look at it. Oh, look at it. There's nothing there, buddy. Bravo. Everybody's looking at you. All right, folks. Hey, found some sassafras. I can smell it. All right, we'll be back. Hey, digging history fans. James McCormick here. Now, there's no real old money in here, but I did find a ring. It's silver. Could be white gold. I'm going to have to look a little closer. I don't have my jeweler's loop uh, that I can see it closer with, but uh, a lot of new quarters, new dimes. Um, I don't know. One, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, about a dollar and 89 cents and change, and a ring, the value I do not know of just yet, but hey. You remember what Corbett and I were saying. You can't find anything sitting on the couch, folks. And this doesn't look like much, but if you go out and do this, I don't know, six, seven times a week, just put all that money away. Don't spend it to the end of the year. Get one of them great big jugs and just fill it up. You're going to have a little bit of, bit of money there. So uh, it's not a bad little haul. Uh, it'll pay for batteries. Uh, it'll pay for a cup of coffee, the ring. I don't know. It might pay for something. Might be, might be enough to get a new metal detector. I don't know. So, time will tell. Keep watching, folks, on Digging History. We do find the good stuff, and we don't sit on the couch. And welcome back, folks. We hope you enjoyed that footage from the field. And uh, I'm going to let Corbett close the show out today because he hasn't been around a while. <laughs> and guess what? No pressure. No pressure, buddy. <laughs> but tell them how much you love them and tell them how much we appreciate them and then we'll, we'll roll up. We, we really like y'all's support. We really appreciate it. So just keep digging with us. Get off the couch because you're not going to find it there. And I'll try to get off the couch too and see y'all out there. Goodbye, folks. Have a great day and thanks for watching us on Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice.